Comedian and Fox News host Tom Shalou says good old respect has gone the way of the dinosaur. Raised in Norwood, Massachusetts, in a large Irish Catholic family, Tom says his parents kept him grounded with love for God, country, and family. In his book, Mean Dads for a Better America, Tom shares funny childhood stories while addressing serious issues on the forefront of every parent's mind today. Well, Tom joins me now, and thanks for being here. Thanks, Gordon. All right, let's get into your childhood. You say that your dad was Darth Vader, um, which is kind of scary. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> he, sc he would scare you. He, me and my brother were afraid of my dad. He would wake us up on Saturday morning with his breathing. And really? he'd say, get in the car. And we'd run downstairs, we'd get in the car. We I'm jumped. I'm surprised he got up before you. <laughs> exactly. He did. <laughs> Early to rise. And then he'd get us in the car and drive us somewhere. And we didn't know where we were going. There he is. That's, mm. you know, him in his young, young days. And, uh, but, you know, you look at him now and you think, oh, he doesn't look scary. And, my, you know, my kids, they say, Dad, what are you, what are you writing about? you know, Grandpa Shalou like this for, he's such a nice old man. But I try to tell these stories from the perspective of a little kid. And we were afraid of my dad. We were afraid to speak back to him. And, uh, you know, he was the kind of dad I always say, a lot of young people, I think, you know, you guys get the book. You see the title and you see the humor in it immediately. But a lot of young people that I've been oh, talking yeah. to, they say, what do you mean? You mean abusive dads are good? And I say, you gotta know the difference. Because a mean dad, in my book, it said tongue in cheek, because mean dads, they know when to be mean in the service of raising good children, and that's what it's about. Well, what do you think the impact is, though, uh, from, from, a, from, I guess, a, a society standpoint? Because I don't think we have mean dads anymore. Uh, yeah, I think I, we have helicopter parents yes. that are trying to watch out and keep kids from trouble and, and make sure they have a perfect life. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think the impact of that will be? Well, I think that we, we need to take a little bit of the mean dad philosophy from the past and bring it forward. You know, I was on the playground recently, I'm raising my kids in the Bronx, and I said to one of my daughters, she was having a little tantrum, and I said, she said something about her feelings. I said, I don't care how you feel, I care how you behave. And one of the other parents looked at me. It was a New York mom, she kind of looked at me. She said, where'd you get that? And I said, I think my mom used to say it. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, again, it's, I tell that story, and the idea is that of course, I care how my kids feel, but I want them to know that behavior comes first. I think a lot of times people put it in the other order now. They start with the feelings first. But in my family, be behavior came first, you know, and, and there, it wasn't abusive. We knew our parents loved us. My dad mm -hmm. used to reach for the belt, but he never used it. He never had to use it because, you the know, threat was we enough. jumped, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, are, are, are you worried about America going forward? I try not to worry. The, really? the book is optimistic. You know, I, I like to put a positive spin on things. That's why when I look back, I want to look back at these stories and I want to laugh. And I want people to look at these stories and laugh at the way my parents did it. Because we're not going to do everything the way they did. I would say, you know, we're not going to... My mother tied me to a tree so I wouldn't run in the street. I had a little harness. I was tied to a tree. And she wanted to keep me safe and she had to get housework done. She was very busy. She had five kids. So she tied me to a tree, a simple solution. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna tie my kid to a tree, right, but- let's, let's correct us. She tied you to a harness and you were free to run around. Exactly, I run around the tree <laughs> in That's a circle. That's not being tied to a tree. Well, no, she didn't, <laughs> exactly. I like this. That's being tethered to Exactly, <laughs> I was tethered, you're right. It was like, and I would go in a little circle, you know? But the thing is that today- I bet you wore a path around. <laughs> yeah, exactly, but you see, you know, parents today, there's an argument over, they have little kids in the airport and they, they want to keep them safe so they have them on a harness and people look at them and they say shame on you and it's like mm -hmm. it's just a solution it's just keeping it's the just, kids safe yeah, yeah it's you know? keeping them within reach yes you can go so, so far but you can't go too far yes and it's the political correctness it's gone so far and parents hover over their kids so the thing is I was very disciplined so when I say mean dads it really is tongue-in-cheek because my parents were tough and my mom was the kind of mom who would say if a kid bullied me she'd say well hit him back go out there and work it yeah. out so we had to work things out. The thing is that we were disciplined, but we weren't hovered over. When you told them you got in a fight, were they proud of you? Yeah, she said, go hit him back, and I did. And you know what, I hit him back, and then, uh, let's face it, I lost that fight. He kind of beat me up, but <laughs> I went home, <laughs> and I had bruises, but I had stuck up for myself, right. and he didn't pick on me again. Right, I bet the bully remembered. Uh, yes. You know, and I, don't that's how, I don't want to pick a fight with him. Right, and so we learned that way. Our parents, they had the faith to, to have us learn our own tough lessons, you know? And they weren't that tough. I always say, my parents' parents, they were meaner than them. 
Go back through history. Every dad was meaner going back, you know? Well, but I just went through the, my family history, and I discovered that. That, you know, I, I took it back to the Civil War, and I looked at the family history and what, what these people were like. And then you go through the photographs and how they lived. Yeah. And I go, that was hard. Yeah. I mean, that, that was really hard. Exactly. I always say, look at those old photographs. Do the wife and children look anything but terrified of that no, man in the they, derby hat? They don't look happy either. I mean, they, you see the photographs, and I guess it's, you have to sit still. Yeah. And so nobody, you know, everybody's got this grim face. And yes. And so I think that I, I'm, I am optimistic about the future. You know, if hmm. we think of, if we value, you know, families instead of everyone's obsessed with the, 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 their online image and their, their devices and... You know, sometimes the world, it gets a little crazy and we have to look inward and we can, we can improve the world through our families, I think, you know, it's family time. And I always remind my kids of that, that, you know, you look at me there and you say, come on, you're not a mean dad, but I, you're I mean, mean when I, you, you look at that ice cream, ice cream. Ice oh, cream. Yeah. two scoops there, but I mean when I have to be, and they know that, um, that's just one big scoop. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How much does that cost now? A scoop of ice cream? <laughs> But You're you know, spoiling them. they know they know when uh, they know when I am mean. They know that I'm trying to raise them right, and I think. Um, but have we lost family? Uh, I, I, yes. I look at America today, and, and the dominant household now is a single parent. Yeah, and it's you know uh, the thing is that, that that's another message. It's not just um, you know it, it's not all about you know mean dads and disciplining your kids. It's about having kids. And I tell all mm -hmm. my friends, you know, I'm a comedian. You know, th there's a lot of ne'er do wells out there, and I was one too. You know, I, I got married later. I didn't have my first uh, child till I was 40. But I, at that point, I, after we had kids, I said to my wife, what were we doing? What did we do for all this? How many dinners can you have? You know, so I say to these, these uh, New York comic friends of mine, I say, just get married. And they say, well, you know, I, I haven't found the right girl. And I say, you know, go, we'll go out and seek them, find them, get married, have kids, stop this nonsense. Everyone, they're they're worried that they're not going to have enough pleasure in their life, mm -hmm. but they're not really happy. I mean, I wasn't really happy till I got married and had kids. And then I look back and I said, what was I after for that decade, that lost decade, you know, trying to be a single man in New York? Well, to my amazement, I'm now looking, I'm, I have an older brother and he's got grandkids and I'm now looking and my, my kids haven't gotten married yet. I'm like, can you hurry this along? <laughs> uh, I really want to be a granddad. Yeah. And I want that, that feeling of the generations yeah. that, yeah, we're going to go forward. There's, that's the thing. It's, it's another thing that uh, and a lot of Americans are doing, and, and it's Europe as well. They're, they're delaying this. Uh, they're at, they, first of all, they delay their adolescence till mm -hmm. their 30s, and then they delay their, this kind of adulthood when they're trying to be singles and swiping right and all this other stuff until their 40s. And then at that point, it's kind of like, uh, oh, what was I doing all this time? And it's, it, that's why we don't have the big families anymore. I grew up in a big family, and when my parents weren't around, I was disciplined by my brothers oh, and yeah. sisters. And they'd keep you in line. Yeah. Yeah, so. and they'd rat you out, too. Yeah. <laughs> and I like, I mean, this is why, and, and I'm starting to see it. In my world, I, I'm starting to see bigger families. And, you know, I toured the country with Jim Gaffigan. He's got five mm -hmm. kids, and I'd have my kids, and we'd all go out together. And, uh, and there's a lot of chaos. families out there. Yeah, it's chaos, but it's a, a blessed chaos. Yeah. and it's wonderful chaos. Yeah. So get out there. Get married. Have kids. There you go. Have your kids have kids. Have grandkids and be a mean dad for a better America. The book is called Mean Dads for a Better America, The Generous Rewards of an Old-Fashioned Childhood, and it's available for wherever books are sold. And, Tom, thanks for being Thank here. Thank you so much, yeah. yeah, appreciate it.